If you'd like to learn more about the humanoid state in Roblox Studio and how to check what state your humanoid's in with their own idle state, keep watching and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Hi everybody and welcome to Roblox Snippets. In this video today we're going to talk about the humanoid state. Now if you're not really sure what that is or why you might use it, uh, I'll just bring up the web page of the documentation here for Roblox and humanoid state type. Now if we scroll down through the list you can see there are different states that your player may find themselves in while they are playing your game. For example falling down ragdoll which usually means they've been hit by some fast moving object and they're sort of just flopping around and then getting up if they've been knocked down, jumping, swimming, um, free fall, flying, landed etc. So and there's um, climbing seated so just about every situation that your player may find themselves in in a game however if you look through the list there is no idle state in here and we're going to have a look at that and how you might create your own idle state uh, and this is useful for when you create animations um, and well there are numerous other uh, times that you may want to uh, get interested in changing or knowing what the humanoid state is so the way we'll do it in this video today, and it's not the only way, um, however, we're going to use an attribute and we'll do it in a script. So uh, come over to server script service and we'll add a script and we can just call this our, our main script. And inside of here, we're going to add in game.players.player added and then we will connect a function to this and pass in our player so each player will be passed into the game now inside of here we're going to um, well, we're actually going to just come up above here and create a function so a local function and we're going to create the character added function and pass in the character so just char for short is fine and hit enter Right, and before we, in order to make this run, we're now going to come down here and type player dot character appearance loaded, and then we will connect the character added function up above. Now, at the end here, just make sure there's no extra. I'll get rid of these windows. No extra parentheses. It's just the name of the function. Now you may think, well, why do we do that? Uh, normally it would be add this and then this will be loaded. This helps to prevent errors, um, so it makes sure the, the character is loaded into the workspace before we try to actually run any code inside of here. Uh, and sort of prevents errors and if, if it's a bit laggy when it loads. Now all we want to do in here is get the character's humanoid, so hum for short equals character, and then a colon and wait for child. And we're looking for their humanoid. Once we have the humanoid, we're going to create a attribute in the humanoid. So humanoid set attribute, and the name of this will be idle because this will be our humanoid state. And initially, we'll set this to false. Now, if you have never used attributes before, if I come over and just show you in the explorer window here, workspace for example, and we bring up the properties window if you scroll right down the bottom you'll see this attribute section and if I click on plus you can create an attribute in it of different types and add it in so if I was to say string we might put in here player name you don't have to do this it's just an example so player name and a string and in here and we could just set this in here to whatever the player's name was all right however instead of clicking the button this is the code way of creating this attribute down here okay so I'll just click off that and we'll delete that because we don't need it but they are very useful and very fast to use attributes all right now that we have this attribute that's going to appear in our um, player let's just play it and so you can see where it is because it's important if you want to check things so if we play 
All right, I'm loaded in. If we come up to the workspace and we click on the your character and we scroll down the bottom, you'll see there's nothing in here because we put it in the player, okay? Uh, sorry, the humanoid. So we need to come inside of our character, click on the humanoid and scroll down to attributes and you'll see here idle and it's set to false. All right, so that's where you find it inside the humanoid. So we can stop that there. Well, you can close the main script. Uh, that's all we were going to do to create that attribute. Now, uh, you'll notice that I have this humanoid GUI here, and I said at the beginning of the video, uh, if you go to my website to resources and find the name of this video um, down the bottom, click on it and download it, and you will get this. It's very simple. Uh, it's just got a frame in it and a label that we're going to update. Now, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. You can just use print statements um, instead of uh, adding the code to make use of the GUI, or you can make it yourself. It's uh, not too difficult to, to go about making this. But just to save a bit of time, um, go ahead and download it so you can work along with us. All right, let's move down and when we, um, if we have a quick look at this website again, you'll notice that at the very top here it says, um, when altering humanoid of a player, this should be done in a local script. All right, so we're going to place that local script inside of our starter character. So down the bottom you'll find starter player, and if you expand that, click on starter character scripts, and then the plus, and we're going to add a local script. And we'll change the name of this to be check humanoid state and this is where we will do all of our work for today we'll begin by creating uh, all of the variables and things that we need so we'll create a variable for the players service with a capital P so players equals game and get service and we will get the players service right below this now we'll get the player we can, and remember we're in a local script so a local okay player so that's lowercase equals we're looking in players and we're looking for the local player so this is on uh, your computer the client that this is running so it's just working for that particular player at the time all right now that we have our player when we ha if we have this GUI here this starter GUI when the game runs turns into an item called player GUI and gets put underneath players here. So we need to get a hold of the players GUI. So local P GUI will equal player. And then we will wait for child. And we're waiting for player GUI. Okay. Make sure you get the capitalization correct like this. Otherwise it won't work. It has to be exactly correct. Now uh, as I said, if you're not using the GUI, then you can skip this if you like but um, uh, and use print statements. But for everybody else, we need to get a hold of the GUI in here. So we're looking, we'll say, we'll call this the player humanoid state. And we're going to look in the player GUI. Then we're going to wait for child and the name of the GUI, so it's state GUI. And we'll wait for the frame that's inside of it as well. So state frame. And we'll also add the label. So state label. All right, so you can see everything there. That way, when we use this, we'll just type phumanoidState.text and then change it to whatever we want to change it to in our code. Right, we've got a couple more to go. Now we're going to make use of the run service for this particular example. So we'll add a variable called rs for run service and it'll be game, get service and the run service. The run service uh, provides us with some methods that let us check or run code very quickly. So um, each frame of the game, so if your game's running at 30 or 60 frames a second, then whatever function we write it will run that number of times so that it gets updated very quickly now that we've got our player up the top here we're going to get a hold of our character so a local character will equal simply script.parent because our our script is inside of our starter characters um, folder so that's how we get our character lastly we'll create a 
variable for our humanoid, which will be character, wait for child, and then our humanoid. And that's all the variables we need in order to um, get this to work. All right, now just below this, drop down a couple of lines and we'll create a, a function that will run uh, and check our humanoid function, uh, our humanoid state for us. And we'll call this uh, humanoid state. So local function humanoid state and move down. We're going to use the run service just below this and it will run this function um, up to 30 frames a second so it's going to run it very quickly and that way we will get very instant results as to what our humanoid state is so rs.stepped and then we put a colon connect and simply type in the name of our function up above all right which is humanoid state so we'll just type that in with no parentheses all right, we'll just uh, find out what our state is um, initially before we look at um, sort of using our idle state. So to do that, let's just create a, a variable called state and it's going to be equal to humanoid and we'll just put in here get state with a set of parentheses and that will return to us an enum. All right, so a built-in uh, Roblox ver um, variable um, is the best way to describe it and it will describe what state our player is in. So, so to test this we'll put in here simply a print and we'll print state and we'll also use our GUI so humanoid state dot text equals now this is returning an enum and we need to change it to be text or a string in order to use it in here so we put in here to string and then add state in here in order to make it correct come up the top and click on file and save and play all right i'm loaded in the game and as you can see in the output window we have our enum saying that we are running and also up the top here which doesn't fit in our text box however it's also saying running yet our character is standing completely still now if I jump you'll see that it said uh, that I jumped uh, jumping free fall and then I landed or if I run over here of course we're still running but we don't have our idle working yet so we'll stop the game there and let's work on getting that to work so inside of our function just delete those lines that we've put in here and we need to work out a way to work out if our player is simply standing still so the most basic way uh, to see if a player is standing still is to check their move direction well that doesn't work for everything and I'll show you um, what I mean in just a minute however let's add a conditional statement in here to say if the humanoid get state all right is equal to uh, actually sorry we'll say if humanoid dot move direction equals so two equals vector three dot new zero comma zero comma zero then all right our player we're going to say that our player is idle and this is where we will make use of our attribute so we'll say humanoid set attribute idle and we're going to set this to true and we'll also update our text label so player humanoid state dot text will equal idle and if they are idle we'll then return or exit out of this function now below this we'll put an else statement for now so if they're doing anything else then we'll copy these two lines so highlight these and control or command C to copy and control or command V to paste alternatively you can highlight them right click and come up to copy up here and then paste and we'll change idle to be false now and in this box we'll put in here um, other state so if they're not idle then they're going to be other state all right so let's uh, click on file and save and give that a quick test and play 
Alright, so I'm loaded in the game, and as you can see, we're coming up and it's saying that we are idle, and if I run, we are in other state, other state. Alright, however, if I now jump, you'll see that it doesn't change, and it keeps saying that we're idle. And part of the reason for this, if we click on the Explorer and our properties, and uh, you can do this or you can just watch, uh, in our workspace, remember that if we have a look at our humanoid, and come down to if you scroll down through here you will see there is our move direction here all right so when i'm moving right left forward or back then these numbers are changing but when i jump other things are changing but the move direction is not so it's not a perfect way in order for us to check whether we are idle so we'll come up here and click on stop and come back into our script and we'll look at our ways to check other um, states that our humanoid might be in and to try and make our, uh, this method up here or this conditional statement a little bit more secure in terms of telling us whether our player is idle or not. Alright so I'll show you how to check whether the player has jumped in the air, is falling and landed. Now all of those actions take place very quickly. So when you press the jump, jump is going like when you actually release the player from the ground and they go up in the air. And then free falling is when they're falling back to the ground and then landed is on the ground. So they happen very quickly. However, this conditional statement did not uh, check for that. And we're going to show you how to do that. So I'll get rid of these windows so you can see what's going on a bit clearer. And Initially, we're going to move down below this entire conditional statement here, and we'll put a comment here. So this first one will be jumping state. So this is what this is going to check here, all right? And you can make a note very quick. Okay, so we'll make a conditional statement that says if humanoid get state, is equal to enum dot humanoid state type dot jumping then the player is jumping so we want to change our humanoid state at the top text to say jumped uh, sorry we we'll just put jumped as a string and just below this we will return now you will notice there is no return in this else statement up the top here because if I put a return in here, right, this becomes an error. And if you move over here, uh, over this red part here or even over this, it says unreachable code, previous statement always returns because it either does this or this so it never gets here. So make sure there is no return in your else statement up the top here. Now that said, this will check jumping, but we want to check landing and we also want to check free falling so we're going to copy all of this code here and move down a couple of lines and paste and change this to be uh, falling all right so falling I'll put it in capitals falling state and all we have to do is change over here our humanoid state to be dot falling or free fall is the the correct term sorry free fall and we can put in here falling to update our state and the last one will be landed so if we copy this again and drop down a couple of lines and we'll say landed state and over here just take that off and add a dot and you'll see landed comes up here so we can add this in landed all right so these are three states we're going to check that all happen very quickly now up the top here all right we want to besides checking that the move direction we want to make sure that they are not jumping or free falling we won't worry about landed um, so much but we will worry about the um, the other two. So at the end of the vector 3 here, we're going to add an and, alright, and we're going to say uh, humanoid state, 
and we're going to say not equal to so that is shift plus the key it's a squiggly line up next to your one on your keyboard all right that equals not and then the equals after it and we're going to add in here enum dot uh, humanoid state type dot jumping all right and so that this is easy to see just at the beginning of the end just hit enter and it will move this down to the next line so we can read it all so it should be humanoid state not equal to jumping all right and we're going to do another one for falling the same way all right so over here we'll say uh, just put an and and so you can see it when we drop we'll just drop this down and type in here and we can add this this whole line in here and paste that in and we'll change this to be uh, free falling so this is now going to check that the player is not jumping and not free falling otherwise they will be idle now if that's if they are doing either of these things it should skip this code and come down and run these down below all right so let's click on file and save and I'll just bring up my output window in case we get any errors and we'll play and I did get an error uh, state is not a valid member in line 13 so I'll just check that through here um, oh sorry I put state here it should have been get state my apologies All right. so it happens to the best of us get state all right hopefully you picked that up and didn't make my error but let's click on file and save and we'll play again all right loaded in the game with no errors this time and running other state other state and now if I jump you'll see very quickly it changed to jumped falling landed and then went back to idle so if you did want to check that those were all actually working you could uh, in your in here add in a print statement in here as well to print uh, the state in each of these but I'm, sure, I'm rest assured they are working now as I said um, to flesh this out and make it even more robust so that you can always check that your player is idle it is probably best that you bring up this here and you add in some conditional statements to check all these other common things such as swimming um, flying etc there are some that you don't you may not need to like running no physics or um, perhaps down the bottom uh, physics or none you don't need to do those but just the things that would you would use in your project would be uh, adequate in order to make use of this idle so I hope that you found that um, uh, interesting and that you can make use of it and I look forward to seeing you in future videos if you found this video useful subscribe now for more information about my online courses go to mrbrendanross.com